then need to look at the cost of preference shares. Now, some important terminology before we get to the calculations. If you are given a coupon rate in the question, the coupon rate is always used to calculate your dividend cash flow. And it's very important that you distinguish the coupon rate from the market-related rate, the fee rate, or the rate on similar preference shares. If you are given a market-related rate, a fee rate, or a rate on similar preference shares, that is the cost of the preference share. And the cost of the preference share is what we use as our discount rate when calculating the market value. So please note, you may see in questions that you have two different rates, and you need to know which rates to use where. The coupon rate is used to calculate the dividend cash flow. The cost of the preference share, which is referred to as the market-related rate, the fair rate, or the rate on similar preference shares, is what we use as our discount rate when calculating the market value. All right, so I'll show you that now in a few examples. Then once again, Either you are going to be given the market value or the present value, and then you are going to be expected to calculate the cost of the preference shares, or alternatively, they may give you the cost of the preference shares, and you are then required to calculate the market value or the present value of the preference shares. Now, once again, I did already discuss this with you. You will always need the cost of the preference share because in order to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, you need to know what the cost of the preference shares are. So either they'll give you the cost of the preference share or you'll need to calculate it. In some instances, you may need to calculate the present value or the market value of the preference shares, but this won't always be necessary. So don't waste valuable time performing calculations that are not necessary. First, you need to look at the required. Depending on what the required says and the information provided in the question, that will help you determine whether you need to calculate this market value over here or not. And like I said to you, we are going to deal with this principle at the end of our lecture where we look at our actual WAC calculations. So I am going to come back to this at the end of the lecture so that you know exactly when you need to calculate market values and when you don't need to calculate market values. For now, just be aware, you won't always need to calculate market values, but you do always need to know the cost of the preference share in order to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. Now guys, up front in questions, you are going to have to determine what type of preference share you are dealing with, because your calculation is going to depend on the type of preference share you are dealing with. Either it is going to be a non-redeemable preference share, or it is a redeemable preference share, or lastly, it is a convertible preference share. So when you read through the information provided in the question, first identify what type of preference share you are dealing with because that is going to affect your calculation. Let's first discuss non-redeemable preference shares. So if it's a non-redeemable preference share, it means that at some point the company issued preference shares in order to raise finance. So when they issue the preference shares, Obviously, investors buy those preference shares, and that results in a cash inflow for the company. Then if they are non-redeemable, that means they will be preference shares in perpetuity. So forever, they will be preference shares. The company will never buy them back. So they are not repaid. And that means dividends are going to be paid in perpetuity. So going forward into the future, in perpetuity, the company will pay dividends on these preference shares because they are non-redeemable, they are never repaid. And obviously, if the company pays dividends on preference shares, that is going to be a cash outflow. All right, so because this is a perpetuity calculation, we calculate the present value by taking the dividend and dividing by the cost of the preference share, or alternatively, if they give you the present value and you need to calculate the cost of the preference share, we take the dividend, divide by the present value, and that gives you the cost. So your calculation just depends on what you're given and what you need to calculate. If you're given the cost, you calculate the present value, note above, only if necessary. You don't always need the present value. If you are given the present value, you are going to calculate the cost. Right, then I just tell you what everything is. The present value is obviously the market value, D stands for your dividend cash flow, and KP is the cost of the preference shares. 
Let's go and look at some examples. Lannister Limited issued preference shares without par value for a total consideration of 2 million rand and there are 20,000 shares in issue. These preference shares carry a 15% dividend payable annually in arrears and they are not redeemable. Alright, so we are dealing with a non-redeemable preference share and they carry a 15% dividend. Now that, guys, is your coupon rate. So be careful, they're not always going to tell you it's a coupon rate or what it is. If they carry a 15% dividend payable annually in arrears, then that is the coupon rate that we are going to use to calculate the dividend cash flow. That is not the cost of the preference shares. Now we are told. A fair rate of return for preference shares with a similar risk profile is 15.3%. Now this is where I said to you, you need to be careful because you've been given two different rates in the question, so how do you know what's what? We use the coupon rate to calculate the dividend cash flow. That's the dividend that the company will pay every year on these preference shares because they won't ever be redeemed. We use the market-related rate the fair rate or the rate on similar preference shares as our discount rate when calculating the market value. That is the cost of the preference share. So this rate that we've been given here of 15.3% is the fair rate for preference shares with a similar risk profile. So guys, that is the cost of the preference share. The fair rate for similar preference shares with a similar risk profile, that is the cost which we are going to use as our discount rate in order to calculate the market value. Now in this example, you've been given the cost of the preference share and you need to calculate the market value. So how do we calculate the market value? We take our dividend and we divide by the cost of the preference share. And you can either perform this calculation in total or you can perform the calculation per share. It's up to you. Obviously, don't do both. You get exactly the same answer. I'm just showing you that both alternatives are 100% correct. If we perform the calculation in total, in order to get the dividend, we take the RAND value of the preference shares and we multiply by the coupon rate because we use the coupon rate to calculate our dividend cash flow. And D is your dividend cash flow. So we multiply that by 15%. Then we divide by the cost of the preference share. The cost of the preference share is 15.3%. And because we are working with the total dividend, that gives me the market value in total. Then as an alternative, you could perform this calculation per share. So let's just quickly go through that calculation. Instead of using the total RAND value of the preference shares, you are now going to use the PAR value per share. So we need to take the total value, divide by the number of shares in issue to get the par value per share. Then if we are calculating our dividend cash flow, we multiply by the coupon rate in order to get the dividend cash flow. And we divide by the cost of the preference share, which is 15.3%, and that will give you the market value. Now please note, because you are working with the dividend per share instead of the dividend in total, this is not going to give you the total market value. It gives you the market value per share. You multiply by the number of shares in issue to get the market value in total. Then you will notice that there is a slight difference between your answers over here, and that is just a rounding difference. Please don't stress about rounding differences. Rounding differences will be marked through. Now, guys, the reason why example 5.2 is important is now you are still dealing with a non-redeemable preference share. However, now you need to calculate the cost of the preference share when the market value or the present value is given. So now you are calculating the cost because the market value or the present value has been given. Whereas in the last example, we were calculating the present value or the market value because the cost was given. 
All right, so it's just showing you how to restate the formula, and instead of solving for the market value, you are now solving for the cost, but you are still dealing with a non-redeemable preference share. So please work through that example on your own. All right, so that deals with non-redeemable preference shares. For redeemable preference shares, once again, the company is going to identify a situation where they need to raise finance, and they issue preference shares to raise finance. So investors will buy preference shares in the company, and it obviously results in a cash inflow for the company. Then, throughout the period, dividends will be paid at regular intervals, so obviously if the company is paying dividends, that is going to be a cash outflow. And now we are not dealing with a non-redeemable preference share. This is a redeemable preference share, meaning that it's going to be repaid. So after a certain period of time, the preference shares will be repaid, and that will obviously also be a cash outflow for the company. Now when we are looking at these calculations, we can't perform a perpetuity calculation. With the non-redeemable preference shares, we performed perpetuity calculations because dividends would be paid in perpetuity. Now, we have preference shares for a limited period of time only, so we can't perform a perpetuity calculation. Instead, we need to look at the cash flow separately. Now, there are two different ways you can perform this calculation. Either you can use the cash flow function on your financial calculator, that's one option, and this method can always be used. You can always use the cash flow function on your calculator. Or there is also a shortcut that can be used. But the shortcut can only be used if your annual cash flows are equal. Let's go and look at an example. Lannister Limited has in issue 20,000 15% preference shares. So if there are 15% preference shares, that is your coupon rate which you are going to use to calculate your dividend cash flow. The preference shares were issued at 100 Rand per share on the 1st of October 20X1. And they are redeemable, so we are dealing with a redeemable preference share in this example, at a discount of 8% on the 30th of September 20X7. You need to calculate the cost of the preference shares so you have to calculate the cost at the 1st of October 20x3 if they are currently trading at 98 Rand. So if they are currently trading at 98 Rand, that is your present value or your market value. So in this example, you've been given the present value or the market value. So the present value is given, and you are required to calculate the cost of the preference shares. Now, you would have seen we've been given various different dates. We were given the date that the preference shares were issued, the date that they are going to be redeemed, and also you've been told to calculate the cost on the 1st of October 20X3. So we have three different dates, and all of these dates are extremely important. Let's plot all of this on a timeline so that it makes more sense. On the 1st of October... 20x1. The company issued preference shares. They issued 20,000 preference shares of 100 Rand each. So there would have been an inflow over here of 2 million Rand when they issued the preference shares. The preference shares are going to be redeemed on the 30th of September 20x7 at a discount of 8%. So when they redeemed, the company is obviously buying the preference shares back. It's an outflow of cash. So this will be an outflow of 1,840,000 Rand. Then throughout the period, the company is going to pay dividends on these preference shares. So every year there will be dividends.
And how do we calculate the dividend cash flow? We must use this coupon rate over here, and it's based on the rand value of the preference shares. So it's based on this amount of 2 million rand. Any discount or any premium on issue or redemption is ignored when you are calculating the dividend cash flow. When you calculate the dividend cash flow, it's based on the nominal value of 2 million rand. So to calculate our dividend cash flow, we take the 2 million rand, multiply that by 15%. So we have an annual dividend of 300,000 rand. So that's obviously going to be a cash outflow every year for the company. And in the final year, we'll have the redemption amount. And in addition to that, we will also have a dividend of 300,000 rand. So those are your cash flows over the full period of the preference shares, from when they are issued to when they are redeemed. Now, please be careful. We need to calculate the cost at the 1st of October 20x3. So we are calculating the cost of the preference shares over here. And when you are calculating the market value or the cost of the preference shares, all past cash flows are ignored in your calculation. We only take future cash flows into account in our calculation. So you'll see just below, I'm showing you both alternatives. Either we can use the cash flow function on our financial calculator, or we can use the shortcut. And the reason we can use the shortcut in this example is because the annual cash flows... are equal. How do I know that the annual cash flows are equal? These are my annual cash flows over here, this annual dividend payment of 300,000 Rand every year. Because it's 300,000 Rand every single year, my annual cash flows are equal. So the cash flow function, you'll remember I told you, this method can always be used. But the shortcut can only be used if your annual cash flows are equal. So because the annual cash flows are equal at 300,000 Rand per annum, we can also use the shortcut. So regardless of which method you use over here, you will come back to exactly the same answer. Let's first look at using the cash flow function on your calculator. Please note any past cash flows are ignored. So this inflow of 2 million rand when they first issued the preference share is not taken into account. Dividends for the first two years are not taken into account. We only include future cash flows in our calculation. That is extremely important. Okay, don't look at past cash flows. So your future cash flows are going to start... We are trying to calculate the value today on the 1st of October 20x3. So that is your first column because that is the date that we are trying to calculate a value. 1st of October 20x3. Then include all of your future dates. So only look at future cash flows over here. So you'll even see when we include our dividends in the calculation over here, I'm not including the dividend that was paid on the 1st of October 20x3 or the 30th of September 20x3 because that is a past cash flow or current cash flow. We only look at future cash flows in our calculation. So for the dividend, I'm only looking at the dividend for 20x4, 20x5, 20x6 and 20x7. Only look at future cash flows. Then, we also have an outflow of 1,840,000 right at the end, on the 30th of September 20x7, when the preference shares are redeemed. So show that redemption amount over there as well. Now, in this example, we've been given the market value or the present value, and we need to solve for the cost of the preference share. So include your present value or your market value on the 1st of October 20x3 because that is the value on the 1st of October 20x3. It is not the issue consideration of 2 million rand. It is your current market value at this date, which you were given in the question. 
So you include that. It's 98 Rand per share multiplied by 20,000 shares. That is your market value today. The market value today is shown as a cash inflow. Your dividends are all shown as cash outflows, and obviously the redemption is also a cash outflow. The direction of your cash flows must be correct. Right, you then total your cash flows, input all of these cash flows into your financial calculator, and solve for the internal rate of return. And that is going to give you the cost of the preference share. You are given the market value, you're solving for the cost. And only include future cash flows in your calculation. Current cash flows and past cash flows are ignored. The only thing that goes into your current column over here is your present value. The value today, obviously. All right. So that is performing the calculation using the cash flow function on your calculator. As an alternative, you can use the shortcut. You input your dividend as the payment amount. So because that annual cash flow is equal, we can use this shortcut. Your future value is the redemption amount. The present value is obviously your market value today. N is 4. Because again, we are only looking at future cash flows. There are only four periods left. So N is four. And you compute I, which will give you the cost of the preference share. And how do I know that N is four? Another way you can check this is my present value is the value today on the 1st of October, 20X3. The future value is when they are going to be redeemed, which is on the 30th of September, 20 x Seven. So that is four years later. So N is obviously four. All right, guys. So in this example, you were given the present value or the market value of the preference shares, and you needed to calculate the cost of the preference shares. In the next example, the cost of the preference shares is given, and you need to calculate the market value. So it's the same information as the previous example, except now you are told that a fair rate of return for similar preference shares with a similar risk profile is currently equal to 18% per annum. So if that is the fair rate of return for similar preference shares with a similar risk profile, that is the cost of the preference shares. So you've been given the cost and you need to calculate the market value. Then there's one other difference in this question. This question also shows you how to deal with a missed dividend. So we are also told that the directors expect that all dividends will be declared and paid except for dividends in the final redemption year. And this is due to expected cash flow shortages. So if we look at our calculation, using the cash flow function on your financial calculator, we are looking at four years, we are only looking at future cash flow, so it's still four years, the same as the last example. And we have dividends every year, except for in the final redemption year, because of what we were told over here in the question. They won't have any dividends in the final redemption year due to cash flow shortages. So there's no dividend over there in the final year. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. You can see you've got your redemption amount there in the final year at a discount of 8%. It's the same as the last question. The only difference in this question now is you've been given the cost of the preference share, which is 18%, and you need to solve for the market value. So you input all of these cash flows into your financial calculator. 18% is your discount rate, because remember we always use the cost of the preference share as our discount rate when we are calculating our market value. We use the coupon rate to calculate our dividend cash flow. So input everything into your calculator, solve for your net present cost, and that will give you the market value. Make sure you know what to do where you have a missed dividend in a question. Obviously, don't include that cash flow over there. Now, this example is also important because it shows us that the shortcut can't be used because your annual cash flows are not equal. 
There's no dividend in the final redemption year. So because there's no dividend in the final redemption year, your annual cash flows are not equal and the shortcuts obviously can't be used.